What's happening sports fans? Welcome back to another episode of Mama and Papa Joe. Today is going to be a bit of a different cook. Uh, we're going to be doing more of an experiment. We've got some stewed beef, I believe to be chuck, uh, a chuck roast. And we're going to be gluing that together to make a steak. I've never done anything like this before and we're going to see how it turns out. First time to our channel, uh, hey, take a look around, hit that subscribe button. We think you're going to enjoy what you see. Let's get started. So this is meat glue, transglutaminase. It is a naturally occurring enzyme. Uh, it is part of who we are. It's inside us. It occurs naturally in, uh, in meats. Uh, but this processed version uh, is made from uh, pigs or cows. It's a part of their blood uh, plasma. So uh, there's nothing harmful about it. I'm not here to encourage you to use it. Uh, I'm just trying to experiment for my own purposes. When you pull it out of the package, it should be firm. Uh, that indicates that the package has not been compromised in any way. And once opened up, then things should loosen. You can store this at room temperature uh, under 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but once open, uh, in order for it to stay fully effective, uh, it should be kept below 40 degrees. So uh, after this, I'll be placing this into the freezer, sealed up nicely. This is that uh, stewed meat, and it is pretty well marbled, man and it's about a pound and a half. So to use that meat glue, the idea is uh, you will sprinkle all the sides, then press it together uh, for a minimum of four hours, but overnight to 24 hours is even better. Second way you can use it is to use four parts water. I've got four teaspoons of water to one part transglutaminase to make a bit of a slurry. That meat is pretty dry, so I'm just going to give it just a little moisture to allow the dry that I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add a little more dry. Just gonna do a little bit of that. And I really want this to stick. So once again, folks, I am not here to encourage anyone to use this. I'm just trying to see how well it works from what I understand, stores, uh, not stores, but restaurants are using this and selling it to customers. And that would not be a problem if they let the customers know up front. But if you don't, if they don't, then I kind of feel like uh, they're hiding something. Stores are also, uh, meat markets are also using this to put together leftover uh, trimmings. But they have to identify uh, those products on the package and you're gonna see it saying uh, reformed or formed meat or something to that effect so now I'm just gonna come back with some of this powder in addition to the slurry and we just want to make sure that this is fully covered on all sides and I think this is going to do this. All right, let's get ready to form this. All right, so I've got a piece of saran wrap. I want to place this into a bit of a mold, but I am not sure uh, what size is going to fit. I've got two pans, and I'm thinking this smaller pan might work. So you want as much of the air out of it as possible. And I'm looking for uh, hopefully an inch and a half, inch and three quarter thick stick, so to speak. All right, and I think that will do us. We're gonna put this back into the fridge overnight and we will come back and get going in the morning. All right, we are back. It's been about 15 hours on our puzzle. <laughs> Our puzzle-like steak is out of the fridge, come in the room temperature, and let's see what we're working with. All right, you can see where things are glued together, man, but it's pretty well set. 
that glue really works. Uh, there's some little holes that I couldn't get closed, but uh, other than that, we're good. We're right about an uh, inch and a half, maybe inch and three quarter. Now the thing about this steak, folks, if you're a fan of uh, steaks cooked medium rare, like I am, this might not be the best steak to cook that way because we introduce so much bacteria to the interior of this steak. You know, a normal steak, uh, all the bacteria is on the outside. The inside of that steak is pretty much uh, bacteria free. Uh, I don't know if I can use the word sterile, but when we slice into that regular steak, we immediately introduce bacteria into those fresh sliced areas. And that's what's happened here. This, all these pieces create so much surface area that now we've got a ton of bacteria from the outside inside. So while you can eat it medium rare and not get sick, there's a small chance that you could based on how it was processed at the, at the plant or whatever the case might be. How I'm gonna get around that to still try to get that medium rare type steak is I'm gonna cook this sous vide. I'm probably gonna do about 1.30 for uh, two hours or so. All right, so we're gonna pasteurize and kill the bacteria that's on the interior uh, and still try to get that medium-like look. I'm not gonna use any salt. Uh, I've got some uh, yellow onion, unsalted butter, garlic, maybe 10. Try to get this thing some flavor. All right, here we are. So 1.30 in the sous vide for two, at least two hours. All right, here we are, two hours and 15 minutes later, man. We're gonna call this good. <laughs> it never looks appetizing. We're gonna get this into a uh, cold water bath to stop the, uh, the cooking. If you've never thought about it, folks, this is a great way to take some, uh, some pre-cooked meats camping, or uh, if you're traveling uh, to go see your parents out of town or something, you can take meats pre-cooked and then all you got to do when you get there is to sear it. We're going to let this rest maybe an hour or so, then we'll come back and uh, finish searing in that cast iron pan. All right, our steak has had a little over an hour, man. Uh, it's at room temperature. So we're going to sear it now without really cooking the interior any further. We want to get off any of these herbs that might have, uh, that might still be stuck on there. And now we're pretty much just going to dry. The drier your steak is, the better sear you can get. Some coarse cracked pepper and Uncle Chris gourmet steak seasoning. And that's going to be it. I'm going to get this pan going. All right. We've got some high heat oil. We're using uh, avocado. I've got some good smoke coming. I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna make sure we got some good contact. And we're just gonna be flipping about every 30 seconds. If you wanna get fancy with all of the, uh, the butter and the garlic, time you can. I'm not going that route today. All I'm looking for is just a, a sear. Alright folks, we're going to call that good, man. Alright folks, so here we are. And that does not look bad. I can see somebody that's really an expert, somebody with experience, putting these steaks together with this meat glue, uh, how someone can be fooled in a restaurant, uh, especially in a restaurant once it's cooked, once it's uh, crusted over, because this looks pretty good. Uh, if I happened to come up on this, I would not immediately think meat glue. And I did not do a very, very good job of putting it together. But let's see, because the steak rested before we seared it, we don't really have to get a long rest. Let's go right down the middle to start. Man, that is not bad. I mean, even from the inside, aside from uh, some air bubbles 
it's hard to tell uh, that there's any connection. That is pretty cool. I don't know how well you're able to see it, man. But take a look at that. Wow. Oh, my Nelly. Oops. <laughs> Folks, I'm here to tell you, uh, you cannot taste uh, this meat glue. It tastes like a pretty damn good steak. Man, that is pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. Now, I'm also here to tell you, this isn't something that I would be doing very often. I did this video primarily uh, just to, to see for myself what it was all about. And could someone be fooled in a restaurant or even in a, in a uh, supermarket? So when you go to a supermarket, make sure that you're looking for a little label. That label will say reformed or uh, foreign meat, something to that effect, meaning that it was put together. If you go to a restaurant, you can ask that question because in a restaurant, they will not label on a menu. And if you're a fan of something like uh, a tenderloin, you know, that comes in a uh, tubular round shape, uh, this can easily fool you. You don't want to be paying premium for what is pretty much scrap meat glued together. But I'm very, very impressed with the way it's done. Uh, I will probably never do this again. Very successful experiment. I'm, uh, I'm kind of impressed the way it turned out. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, a successful cook. I kind of got what I wanted from this video. Yes, it is possible to fool someone with a, uh, with a meat glue steak. No, I will not be doing it. I will not be eating meat glue on a regular basis. All the science says that it's safe, but uh, if I don't absolutely need to eat it, I definitely will not. Make sure you're checking those packages uh, in the stores to make sure you're not buying such a thing and asking the same question in a restaurant. I want to thank you guys as usual for hanging out with Mom and Papa Joe's. And like I said, if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, uh, man, we really, really appreciate your support. Go ahead and smash it. I want you guys to take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and we'll see you when we see you. Holla!